Welcome to the Integration Station. I'm Naturally Ashley, your host, here to guide you down the rabbit hole into the world of psychoactive plants, frogs, and fungi. Good morning, you beautiful souls, and welcome back to the Integration Station. Today, I'm here with Cindy Howell. She's a guest we've had on before, someone we truly love having on uh, and collaborating with. Uh, Cindy is also a host here on Pace Radio and CBG TV. She's done many different shows. Uh, Right now, Mushy Moments, I believe, is uh, one of her main ones, and we've had her co-host on, Steve, here last week. She's here talking to us about... Uh, different psychedelics that she's worked with, the healing properties that they've brought her, and also what healing properties can be available to you just looking into some of these different medicines and things. So we're here to share some stories. Uh, Also, open your eyes and ears to different modalities that can help with mental health and other types of pain management and all kinds of stuff so stay tuned it's one hell of a show one hell of a ride so uh let's dive in you're listening to the pace radio network here at paceradio.net the views expressed by the individuals during this broadcast are their own opinions and they may not be the same as those of their group or other organizations they may be involved with Hello, good morning, you beautiful souls. Welcome to the Integration Station. I'm Naturally Ashley, your host here with Cindy Howell today, Reverend Cindy. Uh, Those of you may know her from some other shows she does here on Pace Radio. And we've also had her on before. Uh, She's in our network. Uh, She's really just been, I don't know, like this really amazing person to come into our life this year. Because it's been this year, right? 2023, and I feel like we've done a lot of meetings in this time <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i met you i met you um it would have been last september so i met you in 2022 but the becoming friends and working together has pretty much been all of this fiscal duration yeah. yeah yeah it's really cool it's like the right time right place right person type of thing you know and uh grateful to have you on again because uh before we you were uh just about to go to ceremony with uh, Bufo. You're talking about some previous experiences, but you've got, you had quite a few more since then. Uh, So I'd love to, um, you know, hear more about what the integration has been. Um, You know, what does it look like for you? And we can, you know, share a little bit about, uh, I guess the ceremonies and the medicines too. Yeah, because we chatted just before I came up um, to meet you. and and do um cambo and 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 everything and uh cambo was crazy um i you know i look forward to doing it again uh but it is uh the the explanation that i've heard over time before i went is definitely right it is the uh, the best worst thing i've ever done to myself um because it's hard it's not easy work um but it is definitely rewarding uh, the Sananga, for example, <laughs> I think it's the hardest part of all of it. And but the the vision that I had for a couple of months afterwards, and being my and being able to see with my my physical eyes, was incredible. The the way that I could see almost through trees when I'm looking into the forest was just mind blowing. Um, and then, of course, uh, last month I went and did two bufo sessions and a. Uh, um, what they would call a hero dose of, of psilocybin. Um, so I've had a lot of medicine in the last couple months. And it's uh, yeah. it's pretty crazy. Um, and I worked on a lot. Like, I mean, I detoxed my body and uh, a lot of inner work with, with the medicines. And uh, then, then that comes to integration. Now, I have... Um, I, I did a great job when I was preparing for Cambo. I detoxed myself I I was eating properly um, and integration for that I should have continued and I didn't uh, and it's affected my life um, so now I'm back on uh, pretending that I'm heading for Cambo in a couple of weeks and detoxing again uh, to get back on that because I, I do hope to do Cambo again this summer um, and I would like to be prepared for it uh, 
I've got a feeling it's going to be one of those things that I'm going to need to be prepared for. I feel like the universe is telling me going, it's going to show up. Don't worry. You may not realize it's going to show up. You may get told, yeah, tomorrow. So be prepared. So that's kind of what I'm, I'm aiming for now is to almost be in a constant state of dieta. And that way, if it pops up, I'll, I'll be ready. Yeah. That's a really amazing way to look at it. And I love that you're hearing these messages. I know you're like a sensitive soul and intuitive too. So, you know, this is really just stepping up those powers that yeah, were already yeah. there. Um, how, what are you doing to protect your energy in this time? Um, well, I have discovered, um, you know, mushrooms help a lot. I, I am back into microdosing on a regular basis. I'm using the, the Fatiman um, protocol, which is, of course, microdosing for one day and then taking two days off and then microdosing for one day. Uh, my microdoses aren't always micro. Sometimes they're like a double or a triple. So they're, they're you know, heading towards a macro dose. Um, but sometimes I need that. But I, I am making myself do it every every third day. And I am finding that that helps. Um, I have also been studying and learning a little bit more about the, the rapé or hapé, depending on which tribe you are purchasing it from. Um, uh, and I have discovered, uh, you know, I have purchased a few from different tribes. I've gotten myself some different pipes. Um, I am looking at taking a course on how to serve it properly because I've, I, I've ordered my, my first serving pipe and, um, you know, I could, uh, the, the technical names, are the, the, the Krupi, I think it's called. And mine is not fur. I know it's not fur. It's never fur. Um, so that's the self-serving one. You know, I have two yep, or three yep. of those. And then the, the Tepe pipe for serving, I've got that coming. Tepe pipe is on the way. I've ordered one. I've been asked um, a lot to serve people um, since, you know, doing this with you. And of yeah, course, it's I, so powerful. You had no idea in the beginning. So, no, I mean, like I, I, I had heard about it before you brought it out um, in my readings about about different medicines and whatnot. I had heard about it. Um, it scared me because it was t it's tobacco. Like, I mean, it's it's, you know, for anybody that doesn't know, there it is. Like, I mean, it's just a powder. Yep. Right. And it's just it's 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 literally ground up tobacco and different different hapes or rapes, depending on where you get it from. Um, spelt the same, pronounced differently. Um, they do different things. Like I've got this one that I that I found from a different tribe and it's a third eye, it's not gonna come in clear, but it's a third eye activation. Um, whereas there, uh, as you've taught me, there's the Nunu, which is the traditional one that goes with the, the um, Cambo. Um, there's a master one, which usually has some sort of psychedelic in it, uh, normally San Pedro from what I have read. Um, so they and they all do different things um, and it scared me because it's tobacco and I have been off cigarettes for a long time um, and I was worried uh, that doing this would reactivate that craving which it didn't um, I was worried that snuffing it would reactivate a cocaine craving but it didn't because it's medicine and I have uh, through readings I have I have done a little bit on you know like you know, learned a little bit more on proper doses, how to use it, um, the fact that you should put intentions into it, you know, you should hold it over your heart, you should take it up to your third eye, you should really, you know, and that makes the difference. When you're putting those those beautiful intentions into it, you're turning it into medicine and it, it's no longer comparable and it doesn't bring up the other stuff because that stuff wasn't medicine. I, I, I think I'm Yeah, I think it's... It, no, I get it. And it's like that in how it's made too, right? Because these are yeah. like oftentimes the tribes will go out and pick it with intention to, you know, give it to the shaman. Then that shaman or a, gr a group of uh, women, shamana, will go around and, and gather and then they're smoking uh, these herbs and they're uh, preparing them in a way that they're using the ashes of all of these amazing medicines some psychoactive some not so much nicotina nicotine that is like the tobacco is psychoactive um, you know it's that's said to open up the gates into the heaven so any intention going into this like you know it starts from the beginning and it goes to the end cocaine is not made that way no you know coca Yes, 
coca is grown with intent. And coca grows like a wild weed and you can get it all over South America. You know, because it is medicines, and, but and cocaine tobacco is not the is same. Similar, I mean, because cigarettes, like, I mean, they 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 take the cigarette and they process it. They take the tobacco and they process it. And I don't think it's the same tobacco. It's Virginian tobacco versus mapacho, right? So it's a and different it's, kind of tobacco as well. Yeah, and this is grown in um, the rainforest where there's still so many trees, so many. Um, uh, my, so much mycelium connecting the forest it's getting all of that uh from our ancestors you know like all of that old knowledge and information um whereas in a monoculture farm like virginia for example where tobacco is being grown that's grown in 21 uh different chemical fertilizers and um like but uh pest repellents and, and all that pile it through other chemicals and and to make it white and, and more addictive oh. and flavorful <laughs> so this, well, this flavor is medicine the the rapé yeah. happy is medicine and it helps to keep me grounded uh one of the things i've noticed with the the new new or um and i've done some research on that it's got cacao in it which is chocolate which is yeah. a natural antidepressant so if you're if i if i'm sitting here and i'm you know, preparing for something, um, like for this show, I, I get nervous being interviewed. So I had all these negative thoughts come into my brain going, you're not good enough. Why are you like, why are they interviewing you? Like you have nothing to offer. You look terrible, blah, blah, blah. And so my brain is nattering at me. So I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to pick up some of this new, new, and I'm going to do some new, new, and I'm going to put the intention that we're going to banish those negative thoughts. And, you know, so I sit here for 10 minutes and, you know, I, I lovingly, you know, get out the Nunu and I lovingly, you know, put it in the pipe, well, intentions the entire time. And I do it and I, you know, I sit here and meditate for 10 minutes. And, you know, when I come out of it, it's just like kind of like, yeah, OK, I'm ready. I look fantastic. I feel wonderful. I have things to say and that's why I'm being interviewed. And I'm able to go back at all those negative thoughts with positive intentions and the, the happy rapi, I mean, is it doing something or is it giving me that 10 minutes to meditate? I don't know. Is it a combination of everything, but it works. I think it moves us from the me to the we, right? You know, selfish Cindy would let the, all those negative thoughts get in the way of sharing your work with others, sharing your experience with others. This mm. we version of Cindy tapping into like the collective, the ancestral, knowledge and information that higher self is saying this isn't about me this never was and this never will be this is about sharing the information this is about <coughs> the experience this is about going with the flow of life riding those ups and downs yeah yeah the yeah. being the center of that yin yang so i i find that the the rapé uh really it does a lot of work for me um, and I'm trying now to find a, a course and I have found a recorded course, but not a course to take on how to serve it properly and how to, um, like if you're going to have a ceremony, how to run that for somebody and, and what that involves. I've got my own version in my, in my head and it works for me. Um, and the few friends that allow me to serve them. Um, and I'm very, very grateful for that. I get to, I get to learn a little bit more about ceremony, what I would do every time. Um, and from the little bit I've read, I think I'm doing well. Uh, you know, I, I think I've, I'm, I'm doing good team minutes. I mean, they come back and I go, wow, I wasn't expecting it to be that powerful. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know. It's, it's, it's incredible. And, you know, and some of the side benefits is it detoxes your sinuses. It detoxes your pineal gland. You will, you, it, you know, if you get it up, get it in you and it is going really well, you'll, you'll cry. Um, your nose will run. Like, I mean, like you are detoxed. I, I can yeah. physically breathe so much better when when I'm done uh, a, a rapé ceremony. Yeah. Sometimes we do it just if we feel congested, if we're spending a lot of time in the city or if we're spending time around people um, who may have been sick and we're like feeling a little off. We use it then too for its medicinal benefits in that way. But there are also all these spiritual benefits, which is why it's used in ceremony as well. Um, yeah. I, I've worked with this different versions of um, rat pays, again, working with different tribes. Um, 
and I remember when we did it together and you were like, whoa, Ashley. And you were like, started saying something. And then you looked at me and you're like, you're still in it. It's like, you know, you really, like, I remember in that moment, like I really was, you know, not, <laughs> not in the same reality, you know? Yeah. And that was a master one. There was, you know, versions of DMT in that, but, yeah. um, yeah, it was, um, it's, it's a very interesting medicine. I wouldn't say that it's ever really the same either, you know, because we're always changing. And I think that that adds to it too, to keep our curiosity up, keep us to uh, stay inspired and also in reverence and also humbled yeah. by these yeah. wonderful teachers. It, it is. And it, like I say, like, it, it keeps me grounded. Um, so the, the microdosing with the, the psilocybin, the, the rapé, um, I, I find that they're amazing medicines that I use, and of course, cannabis on a daily. Uh, cannabis is more so really for physical pain than anything else, though. Yeah. And that can be done with intention, too, you know, like yep. the inhale the good shit, exhale the bullshit. You can write your intentions in it. When you turn your grinder, you can turn one way for positivity, the other way to release the negativity. Um, you know, another well, thing. And, that and oh, I. I uh, I as well, I, like, I, I've got a pen, I've got a felt tip pen. Uh, you really want to get rid of some bad negative juju, you roll your joint, you write the negativity that you want to release on the joint, and then you let it burn into the atmosphere. Yes, right. that's great. Make sure and you're you using do, something plant-based because you're smoking. Yeah, you can do moon yeah. water in the bong too, or in the shatterizer, the bubbler. That's a good yeah. one. Uh, what I like what you're saying that you're going to go for a training um you know because this is something that not everybody does you know it's not something that i looked for you know i go more like the witch path you know and that and this is the thing there are these different paths one of them is like that intuitive witch listen to the ancestors listen to the medicine forge your own path the other way is this mentor what i've done up till now yeah yeah there is also this mentorship and I've had different mentors over the years in different areas because I like to gather information before finding my way, especially if it's in new realms. Um, that being said, I don't want, I, I honor direct experience over other people's words. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's like this, um, I guess, boundary there for myself. Um, but in this mentorship, especially when it comes to like rapé and some of these Amazonian medicines is to actually spend time in the rainforest yourself. And um, we actually uh, still have some friends down there um, from the Amazon Rainforest Conservancy uh, where they're preserving land for different things. And uh, I was actually recently asked to go down there. So maybe that's something that we could all do together at some point and maybe just connect with the shamans and, and learn from them. Uh, previous, previously, when I was uh, in South America learning from shamans, it was very different. It wasn't what I expected. I expected, you know, I'm going to go down there, drink the brew and all that. But it wasn't really. It was more about like walking barefoot. Like I kept being told to take off my shoes. And the thing is, when I'm here, People tell me to put on my shoes or ask me why I don't have shoes or like think I'm poor or something. But it's like, uh, but when I went there, they're all telling me like I was still wearing them too often. And it's like, it was just a, like a, such a different thing. Um, but that reinforced me to come back here and be myself and to know like, it's okay to like, you know, barefoot it. Um, and it's not illegal either, no matter who has a sign up that says it. But um, there's other things about like trading seeds and, and collecting seeds. Like I was swapping them with farmers all over the place. I was um, making music. It, it wasn't this, it wasn't all what I expected. I, and for me, that was what brought me to the integration work. Cause I was like, wow, these are all integration yeah. tools. This is not the actual medicine, so it, but it was all still yeah. part of it. It was the lifestyle. Um, so it all, yeah, it I, all goes together. It does. It's, and I think that's why we need so much integration when we come back to reality here in this more Western world or like new age world. Uh, because in the Amazon or like a lot of third world countries, the integration work is their every life, everyday life. The ceremony is their everyday life. Here, regular life is 
opening up a like here i'm working at my friend's store them like opening up the store putting the stuff out it's like routine well even before that is taking care of the kids and like making sure the house is clean then go to work then this then that so it's like yeah um uh, yeah and then shopping after it's like a totally different thing whereas when you're in those other l- worlds it's very much spending time in nature um going with the flow helping your neighbors knowing your neighbors talking with your neighbors like you're you're chilling and one with nature you remember that you're a part of nature yeah yeah here it's just do this do, world do. isn't like that and uh, no you know I, I i even find now that neighbors don't want to know each other um you know and i've fallen into that too like i i, I don't go knocking on my neighbor's door and having tea but we should you know i mean I, I remember when i was growing up it was like that like in my little area of the world where i grew up like i mean when i was running around outdoors i never wore sneakers in the summertime you know i was in barefoot i yeah. would you know easily go to any of the neighbors and knock on their door and say hi you know right up until i moved away like you know yeah yeah, I knew all my neighbors as a kid, but when I was an adult, oh, so. it was nope. Like, yep, didn't even want to. And even our even our kids are losing that these days. Uh, you know, my my daughter, um, you know, about three years ago, she bought uh, a house, um, and then <coughs> and then um, she had a neighbor move in across the road, and they became friends and whatnot. But it was weird. You know, she found it very strange because it's not normal for people anymore to do that. Yeah. So, is what else is like coming up with you? I know you're doing um, this Life is Good challenge. Has that been part of your integration work? No, uh, no, it's just a, it was just a fun Facebook thing that somebody was doing and they tagged me in it and uh, I thought it was cute. So, I just kept doing it, um, but uh, it, it works. Like I mean, like it's scrolling through your phone, and you have to pick a picture, and um, that is that is something. So you like you, know, you pick up your phone and you start scrolling through all the pictures. I mean, I had a lot of stuff come up when I was doing that. So it wasn't meant to be integration work, but it brought on integration work for sure. So the daily thankful thankful post was something I, I did for probably about two years, and um, it was good. And it's another thing that can be an integration tool. Yeah, I did this uh, app on my phone for a while. People send me apps quite often to review them and things. I'm not into it. My phone is so minimalist. Like, there's nothing on it that can distract me, even though like my business comes from there i still delete some of the instagram apps and stuff too sometimes um but i was sampling this one and i kept it as a journal um or it was a journaling app that recorded everything into an excel document afterwards you could download it so i did it for probably about a year and i used it as a gratitude journal so i wouldn't put in anything negative it wasn't this person pissed me off or i had this nothing negative went in it It was only things i was grateful for things that made me happy things that were highlights things i could be grateful for like that were successes or brags and um and then i was able to just save all the actual data so i was able to analyze like where my mind went was like okay what were like the best of all of these and then i took that and made like an actual routine and a schedule and and things like that but that's me i go far like that and I like things organized I like working with data that way I can get rid of the drama <laughs> had too much of that growing up you know so. yeah yeah I don't know yeah oh, I wish I could remember what that was called I'll link it below <sighs> if I it. Yeah. well it shouldn't be that hard to find if it's a journaling app yeah um, I might even see if I can do it now. We should uh, share a sponsor, so maybe. Um, maybe I'll we can search for, for it while we while we share sponsors then. Yeah, I'll see you back here in a few minutes. Okay, Cindy.
Okay. <laughs> You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. When you think of the number of unique products developed in the fields, kitchens, and labs at Legacy 420, it's hard to think that one stands out above the rest. But tell that to the thousands of people who have tried this amazing breakthrough product. This is our sacred salve. This is actually our extra strength. It comes in five different strengths. It's all natural, all organic. It typically works within 10 to 15 minutes of putting it on. It's good for arthritis, it's good for inflammation, any kind of pain. We're very proud of it. Sacred salve, so easy to apply, along with soothing relief. To select a strength that's right for you, come in and talk to your trusted partner. Legacy 420 out on your road. Did you know that the Pace Radio Network isn't just a radio network? That's right, because most, but not all of our programming is now done via video and is then podcasted at paceradio.net. So if you want to watch, yes, watch our programming, you'll find us on the Pace Radio Network's Facebook page, plus the show's own page, and you'll find us live on the network's YouTube channel. And don't forget, you can find it all, video and audio, at paceradio.net. Pace Radio Network by patients, for patients, and for those who want to know. Enjoy the buzz of legalization with Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. From lights to plant nutrients, books, consumption accessories, and more, we've got all your basics to grow or consume cannabis. Visit our info center or take a look at our piercing services and body jewelry, now available in-store through Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. 17 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. Are you a cannabis content creator? Are you looking for a place to have your content seen? If you answer yes to both questions, then you need to check out CBGTV.com. Let's share pace everywhere. That way it can help create peace. People everywhere advocating cannabis education. You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. Hello and welcome back to the Integration Station. I'm Naturally Ashley here with Cindy Howell, Reverend Cindy. Um, so we've been talking a little bit about different Amazonian medicines and some integration work. Um, I also wanted to, I don't know, I guess, um, bring up some of the stuff that we were just talking about behind the scenes a little bit. Um, you know, we were talking about like some of this conditioning that happens from like childhood about, I don't know, like Cindy, do you want to like share the story about your, um, your grandfather? Yeah, sure. Um, that was my, inspiring. My grandfather, my grandparents, my dad, dad's parents, uh, were ministers, captains in the Salvation Army Church. Um, and, uh, very large influences on my life. Um, they they weren't your traditional Christians. Um, or Catholics, uh, they uh, they weren't judgmental. They they didn't uh, look down on people. Uh, they believed that everybody was born pure, um, and that is how we you know deserve to leave this earth as well. Um, my grandfather um, ministered to uh, what were considered the hard cases, um, so he would go to uh, when they got stationed to a new church. He would go to the closest prison to him and he would tell them that he wanted to minister um, the inmates and they would try and set my grandfather up with the people that were in for a year or two and he'd be like no 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 the, the hardcore guys that you keep locked away and you're scared to let in with the general population because you know they're really bad that's who i want to minister they they uh 
they deserve uh, to be helped and to be saved as well. Um, and the great thing about my grandfather is he would go in and, and the, the guards would bring in these quote unquote hard cased men and they would bring them in in shackles and sit them down and they would quite literally shackle them to the chair and to the table so uh, as to protect my grandfather. And my grandfather would say, no, 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 no. I, I'm not here for that. I am here to minister with this man and this man cannot be ministered if he is shackled. And he would insist that the handcuffs and, and whatnot would come off and the guards, it would make them so nervous. And, you know, they wouldn't want to leave the room and my grandfather would shun them out. And he would be like, no, nope, the Lord is protecting me. And he would work with these men. And not once was my grandfather hurt. Not once, by the way, was my grandfather hurt. And my grandfather would help to save these men spiritually and emotionally. Because um, he truly, truly, truly believed that we were... We're all born to have a pure heart and to be forgiven. Because uh, he truly believed that not one of us ever, ever wanted to grow up to be that. And I believe, I believe the same thing. I believe that, you know, we ask any five-year-old out there, what do you want to be when you grow up? You will hear things like police officer, firefighter, hairdresser, makeup artist. You're not going to hear any of those evil things that make you end up in jail. Not one person at five years old says, I want to grow up to be an addict. I want to grow up to be a murderer. They want to grow up to be pure and loving and giving and compassionate. And we are taught over time by things that are done to us and around us that you know we are, we are taught to not be that pureness it's 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 tainted it's taken away and my grandfather worked hard to give it back to people that truly deserved it and i think that's it's so beautiful because i have that same belief of you know nobody's born like we're born pure beautiful souls you know sometimes trauma happens in conception we know this we have that data now um sometimes it happens through the uh pregnancy sometimes it happens through the um the actual childbirth you know the way that it's the hospitals are very traumatizing um and death is very much the same you know we're all given a death sentence but i feel like you know that's kind of it too but when we can um make these beautiful again i feel we'll all be <laughs> we got more company i see you grab the keys for me to go on oh, oh god it's good yeah okay yeah so i guess what i was saying there is when we can make these parts beautiful again um, I think that's where like the saving happens, but what your grandfather was doing is kind of the opposite, but still for the same reasons, right? It's like, he was like, let's make right now the time of saving so that that ending can be better so that you can rectify like what may have happened in childhood or, uh, or, or that birthing. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah another thing that comes up too is you were talking about like wanting to be a firefighter a policeman this and that it's like nowadays kids want to be youtubers and this is where that conditioning comes in too because a lot of stuff you're seeing on there is crazy the stuff that's allowed for kids the stuff that's made for kids huggy wuggy poppy's playhouse like they got these nice names but they're like really demonic um things and you mentioned gta when we were talking before um you know and, and that is some of the stuff that people are growing up with and then there's god mode in gta where you're just like do anything you want there's a, a movie however one that i've um for any parents out there that are like struggling with with this right now um a movie called free guy and it's a really nice one it takes uh things like gta But, um, bless you. The, thank you. The AI, 
in the game, uh, empowered himself, saw that it was a game that he was playing in. He wanted to do everything as the good guy. So he actually got really known for like stealing the weapons from the bad guys and uh, getting some cool shit of his own, fighting the bad guys without killing anybody, like saving people, trying to wake up the other, um, you know, uh, back end characters that are like AIs too. I guess I forget what the actual name is because I'm not a gamer, but <laughs> yeah. There are ways you can do this and like, and still be kind, but it's a weird world that we're living in. Not only do we have the conditioning from all of these years um, leading up to us, but you know, I don't think anybody could have predicted what the internet had in store. Oh, oh, I think that there were predictions and we all just said, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist and you're crazy and and you're whatever, whatever, because I can mean everything that they predicted is happening. You know, yeah, I mean, some I, I, is... I, video games were going to do exactly what they've done. Uh, we all saw it coming um, and it, it is scary. And but the thing is, the voices to quash it, like I said, were, were considered conspiracy theorists. And then now the the fact that a lot more of us see it, you know, it we're, we're at a point that it's really it's going to be really hard to do something about it right now. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know what can be done to to because it, it has been this slow onset build. Like, I mean, I'm not really that slow to be honest. I'm 51 years old and I worked on one of the first business computers in Nova Scotia. I mean, it was huge. It took up a whole like twice of what my den is here right and you know it, it hardly did anything but add numbers like because i was i was a bank teller at the time i was uh i golly gosh i was 15 and i'm 51 now so it really wasn't that long ago that that computers started coming out in our, in our business worlds and You know, personal computers were coming out and we had to like, you know, input games by typing them in and stuff like that. Um, now, most of those games were ping pong games, right? They weren't, you know, shoot shooting games. They were ping pong yeah. games, like, you know, um, but it, I mean, we, we saw this coming for years. What is this going to do? It's going to end up doing exactly what it does. It's created a generation of video gamers which is not that's not the generation now that wants to be youtubers that's my daughter's generation your generation yeah um there's a lot of a lot of that generation that are like they're addicted to the video games like it's it just is what it is and i mean like i've got you know 20 people easily popping up that are literally i mean they get home from work and they they eat and they they get their you know they they, they they get their video games and they're, they're doing this and they're doing this until they they go to bed and then they get up in the and morning they go and into they another dimension but this is the same thing that psychedelics do only natural right we're still going to other dimensions only we're going back to like it's like avatar right we're going back and we're plugging into that tree or the mycelium or the plant or the whatever and we're getting all those downloads from our ancestors all those breadcrumbs Whereas what's happening when people are from our going ancestors? To and that's, that's that's a very important part of what we're doing from our ancestors. Yeah, not from the uh, this man-made world that is sponsored by the people who have the money, who are pushing and saying what it is that they want the games to do, and then the programmers program. You know, and they're yeah. good at bringing realities together and making those programs. But they're also oftentimes working with microdoses and things like that. Like Rolling Stone magazine did something on uh, on that. What's that? Silicon Valley. Most of them were microdosing, and so bringing it together. But the people who are funding these projects, they're not working with the medicine. They, <coughs> they have their own corporate agendas or world yep. domination agendas you know like pinky and the brain <clears throat> yep <laughs> yeah it's crazy so yeah it's it's and the youtubers like the new generation like you say like you ask kids these days what do they want to do when they grow up and i i guess i haven't come across it yet thankfully but yeah i can easily see how they would want to be youtubers yep 
There are people out there making millions of dollars and extremely famous being YouTubers. Yeah, what does it mean to be a YouTuber today? A lot of it's like this silly, ridiculous stuff. You know, jokes that aren't funny. A lot of it's um, sexually, like, I don't know. Kids should not even know what that, any of that is. You know, where's the innocence? You know, it's a lot of it. Uh, you're making me think of the Jackass movies, right? They're not necessarily YouTubers, but they are YouTubers. They, they inspire YouTubers because it's the same yeah. sort of thing. I mean, Jackass was a show or a movie. So you had an hour or two and a half hours long of these silly stunts. Yeah, I love that, but I didn't do any of that dumb shit. But the kids today are doing that. You know, I could laugh at them and be like, oh, that's some dumb shit. The kids today are watching that kind of stuff and they're like, I need to do this for attention. This is how I'm going to get love. And that's scary. It is. It is. And it's, yeah, everybody wants, they all the kids want attention because the parents are on tech to do everything that they need to do because that otherwise they're working or doing grocery shopping or whatever else or on their phones or and when i yeah. like i mean you know or video gaming because their parents are the video gamers that that's the yeah. video game generation right so yeah and like i mean if you stop and take a look at what do kids do when when they're being ignored well they do whatever gets them attention and usually it's being bad yeah yeah <sighs> I yeah. found that app, by the way. The oh, nice. Event. It's called Presently. I don't know if you guys can see that. No, it's not coming in. It's staying. Presently, a gratitude journal. So it is meant for gratitude. I did it for a year, and then I downloaded everything, and it came like the date, all of the bullet points, date, bullet points, and it's all on one document. So it's really easy to track if you want to make your own routines and rituals as an integration step. And the reviews are great. I might even download it again. Yeah. Fun. That's it. Yeah. And you can see it when you do it on your phone. I think that's because I have the black background. Oh, clever. So I've, I've just downloaded it. I'm going to give it a go. Because that's pretty cool. Yeah, we just had a guy on, Bryce. Uh, he did an app, too, called uh, Vivid. And it's about a psychedelic journal uh, for an integration tool. It's a picture of a mushroom. You might like that, too. Vivid? Vivid vivid mind or you could pray vivid psychedelic it's a v as the stem and then a mushroom cap on the top yes cool what what I have a puppy here trying to get my attention. Come here. How old are your grandkids now? Um, My granddaughter turned nine uh, last January. uh, And my grandson just in April turned five. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. This is Suki. How old is Suki? How old is Suki? Suki is uh she'll be 15 years old this summer good girl yeah we've met before so it's her eyes just a hug there you go hug in there you go that makes you happy that's a good integration tool too yep <laughs> the pet therapy is yeah, she's great for that. She loves to hug. It's something that they got right in Hogwarts, in Harry Potter, right? It's like everybody has their animal, their companion. 
She is one of mine. Aren't you, baby? You're allowed to look at the camera. Don't be shy. <laughs> People will love you. There you go. Aww. Mm. It got the Yoda ears and it was big eyes. Oh. Cutie. She's the sweetest. There you go. Are you happy? So, Cindy, how, uh, yeah, I guess when you were, it was it Bufo first or the heroic dose first? Which one? It was Bufo and then heroic and then Bufo? I, I, did, I did, I did Bufo. So I did the actual toad Bufo. So, uh, you know, the, the medicine that's Five actually uh, from the toads. Um, and then I went and did uh, the heroic dose of uh, psilocybin. Um, and then the day after psilocybin, I did the 5-MeO true molecule. Um, yeah, so uh, the, the best way to explain Bufo and 5-MeO is Bufo for me, and if you don't know Iboga, then I'm talking German, but um, Iboga, When you take the medicine of iboga, it comes from the, the root of a, of a plant, right? Uh, that's grown in Africa. And they take the iboga out of the root. But iboga is made up of a number of different alkalines. The main alkaline in iboga is ibogaine. And they take that out because it's, it's the one that does all of that work and takes you on a spirit walk. The other ones will work with it, but some people are intolerant to those, but can take ibogaine. Um, for me, that's kind of the difference between the the bufo and the 5 meo because the 5 meo is the true molecule it, it it you know they 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 take it out of um melatonin actually uh from what i can understand uh whereas bufo is all of the the things that come from the frog you, t you take out the the medicine from the frog and you dehydrate it and you vape it um there's no taking out the molecule that just works um if that makes any sense to you yeah and now what did you like what was the difference in your actual experiences virtually nothing but ever um but the 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 takeaway from either medicine was very much very very similar um i i got visited by uh by people i had wonderful visions of both um people visiting me spirits visiting me and um of course the the bright colors and the white lights um i found with the bufo um and true ceremony because i i did i did the 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 medicine from the frog with a lady that came up from Mexico. So it was true ceremony. She set the room up. She had all of the, the sound therapy, um, you know, all of the sprays, all of the everything. So, you know, I went through the, the whole thing with her. We did the happy with her, um, you know, and she, she served it with one of the, the, the tepi pipes. And that was completely different than self-serving. That was incredible, by the way. Um, so it was, uh, you know, it was incredible that way. And I, I found as I was coming back at probably about the 15 to 20 minute mark, um, I thought, you know, okay, my feet are touching down. I'm coming back. I've got a death grip on my buddy. Like literally I've got his hand so tight that he can't get away. Like he can't get his hand out of my hand. Like I've got the death grip on him. Not, not for anything negative, but for me for grounding. Um, you know, and then the, the lady that was serving me, um, like I say, as I'm coming back down, my, I swear to God, my feet are back in my body. I'm kind of sitting down. I'm getting ready, prepared for, like, to lay back and I'll let go of my friend's hand. And then the, the lady who's serving me, she gets her drum and she comes along with a chant and she chants and she plays the drum around my head and I'm gone again. It, I, I was unbelievably floored like i mean like it's just like holy shit i'm going again 
well, here I go. Sorry, my friend, but I'm keeping the death grip. And I was gone again. And I had more visions and more soaring. And it was just unbelievably incredible. Um, with the pure molecule that I did a week later, um, I did it in a different way because I had I, up to that point, I had vaped it um, and only vaped it. With the pure molecule, one of the other ways that they teach you to to do it is you snuff it, but you snuff it right into right into the septum, not up, just like kind of sideways. So it goes in. So it goes in here. Um, and, uh, you know, then you hold it in and you lay back. And instead of like normally with Bufo, you inhale and you're gone. Like one second, you're 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 sober, and the next second you're journeying. Like when you are exhaling, you're gone. Like that's that's the way that that medicine works. Um, when you snuff it, and there's a proper word for it, and I can't remember. I apologize. Uh, but when you snuff it, it takes up to 15 to 20 minutes to fully onset. So it's a much more gentle glide into the medicine instead of like you know going boom you're in you kind of like you stuff it you hold it hold your nose and you lay back you know you can release your nose after like 30 seconds um and then you lay there and you feel it almost in your skin um and for me this was like i could tell probably about i don't know two or three minutes in. it's like oh well it's like it's picked me up and now i'm floating so instead of like shooting me off to the stars it's like it came along and it put me on a cloud and off we were floating and getting higher and higher. And we were heading towards the stars, but just very, very gently. Um, it was absolutely incredible. Um, I have to go let the dog out, so I'll be right back. Yep. I'm coming. Glad that you can edit that. So yeah, yeah. It, uh, it 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 takes you floating away, and um, I was probably just about to the stars, and uh, you kind of just level off. And I knew at that moment I was ready for uh, for a little vape of it. So I was offered a vape, and um, instead of shooting me off to the stars, it still. I went, it, it sped it up. Like I, I got to the stars with that one, but I didn't really, it wasn't like the first number of times I had vaped DMT, um, 5-MeO that is. It was, uh, it was a slingshot. I started going up uh, with this first vape and it was there and it was in my face and it was it, right in my third eye, actually. Um, it was incredible. And I'm still trying to put together all of the lessons from that. And that's part of integration. And I, I sat up after that was gone. I said, you know what? I said, I think I'm, I think I'm good. And uh, my provider, he said, well, I have, I have the vape loaded up one more time. So, you know, we shouldn't waste it. It'll be too strong for the person coming after you. And, and, and I, I trust this person implicitly. And I, I knew that he knew that I had to go again. I didn't know I had to go again. He knew. And I said, okay, well, let's do it. And I, so I vaped it and I laid back. And Ashley, it was, whew, it's gonna bring me to tears talking about it. It was the most incredible medicine trip I think I have ever taken in my entire career of doing it. I got told that I was doing a good job with the work and that this was for me to enjoy, that I need to put love into myself and I need to simply enjoy life and that I matter and self-love is, is very important. And it was just all about me enjoying. I floated, I soared 
I didn't float, I soared. It slingshot me to the stars. I remember that I am pure love and that um, I deserve that. And I, I remember repeating that to myself over and over again, like out loud was, wow, this, this, is, this is just all for me. This is just for me to enjoy because I've done a lot of work the last couple of years and I need to just enjoy and I need to remember to look after me. And And the people that were showing up, they were there, but they were on the wings. And I kept inviting the men and the medicine said, no, no, this is about you, purely about you. So they can be here and they can observe, but this is, girl, this is you. And, uh, and so I went with it. It was absolutely incredible. Um, the visuals that I saw weren't really showing me anything as much as they were just incredible graphics like and colors and it was kaleidoscope. Uh, it was very bright and white and pastel uh, and shiny and glittery. And um, it was my reward for doing the work that I've done over the past couple of years. Yeah, it was a very powerful trip. And it reminds me that I need to look after me and give me that opportunity in those probably 20 minutes just to be me. What did that look like? What did it feel like? Peaceful and freeing. Uh, I am no longer shy about my medicines. Like, I mean, I carry my happy with me everywhere. Um, I even carried it home on the plane. Like I, I took it through security with my pipe and everything. And uh, they, uh, the, the computer flagged it, which was a funny thing. So when I'm ho coming home from Vancouver and I'm getting going through it, the computer flagged it. And the, the gentleman that went through my bag, he pulled it out and he looked at it, he goes, is this half hay, ma'am? And I'm like, yes, yes, it is. What an amazing medicine. And he put it back in my bag and off I went. And that was really uh, cool too. Um, that's so good so, yeah, to know. I mean, yeah, it's, uh, Thank you. yeah, yeah, it was, it was really cool. So like, I mean, you know, there's, there's more, there's more self-love going on. I am doing a detox of my personal space. Um, my spare room is full of stuff I'm going to sell or give away already. And I'm only about one tenth through things, um, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm just making room for the, the love, uh, and medicine really. I love how you're really owning it now. I, you know, I feel that that's going to inspire a lot of listeners. I don't know if you're frozen again, Cindy. I can hear you. No, I'm, uh, yeah. We're coming in and out. So, you've got a big trip coming up too, right? Gonna go uh, back to BC to get a van. This is one of the reasons for downsizing too. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, when I was in BC, I bought myself a Volkswagen Westphalia. And in July, I'm heading out to pick it up and drive across Canada. It's exciting. We'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'll be fun. How many times have you gone to BC so far this year alone? this year just once oh okay this year i feel like it would have been like three times or something but maybe i'm just thinking about you going back no yeah no i think i've only been once this year yeah this fiscal year because I went out to we were in uh, Ontario before that 
Yeah. But then I was in Ontario with the person I hang out with when yeah. I'm in BC, so it kind of felt like I was in BC, right? Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going out in July uh, to get my, my van, and then I am um, one of the reasons I'm going to sell a bunch of stuff off is because I want to go back in uh, November for the, the Plant Spirit Medicine Conference. Um, you know, anybody that is into mushrooms at all, uh, one of their heroes or idols is undeniably Paul Stamets. Um, so, When is the conference? The plant medicine, let me see. I'm looking it up right now so I can share it. Plant medicine conference. Plant Vancouver. spirit medicine. Yeah, spirit plant medicine conference. Vancouver, BC. We know somebody who's going to have a booth there, too. Who's that? Steve. Steve's going to have a booth at it. Sweet. He deserves to be there. November. Yeah, so Paul Stamets is one of the presenters. I got to go let the dog in. Yeah. Yeah, we've got Paul Stamets, Dr. Pan, Pam. Uh... Chief Ruben George, Dr. Don D. Davis, Flavio Santi, Dr. Zelder, Philosophicant. Yeah, this is an exciting lineup. You can say 50% on tickets right now, so I guess they have like an early bird special. Um. Go over cannabis, San Pedro. Aya, uh, there he is. Dennis McKenna, Gabor Monte. I was like, there's gotta be more. There's access to over 200 presentations. Come. 12th annual. So we have learned from her before. Find a, a nice Airbnb. Yeah. Rent it together. Bring your kid if you want. You know, all that jazz. Yeah, do they let you bring kids? One of the reasons I hold out on things like this, because I like bringing them everywhere. If you can't be a part of it, then I normally sit it out. Because I've got plenty of time where he'll be old and, like, not want to go to things or... You know, where I won't, you know, want to bring him, I guess. But when he's older, I'm trying to. You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. Cannabis edibles are an effective way to manage pain and other ailments, especially when you deal with your trusted partner, Legacy 420, in Tyndanaga, Mohawk Territory. You see, we lab test every product on site to ensure proper dosage every time, which is critical when consuming cannabis edibles. All Legacy 420 edibles are made by our classically trained baker and chocolatier, and we also have super tasty vegan options. Our baker has been in the industry for 25 years. She's also a chocolatier. Everything from savory to sweet, uh, your chocolate bars, brownies, butter tarts, you name it, we make it. Talk to our knowledgeable Canatex about our incredible variety available. Give your trusted partners a call. Legacy 420 out on your road.
In February of 2022, the Victoria Canvas Buyers Club and the Ted Smith were fined $6.5 million, this for helping 8,500 patients with access to medical cannabis. In our interview with Ted, he spoke to us about how people can donate to help in an upcoming court challenge. And here is part of that interview. From what I've seen uh, lately, I believe that you've got something that you're trying to do as far as fundraising to deal with this this next court challenge. For now, people can write checks uh, directly to Jack Lloyd Law Corporation or send e-transfers to save the VCBC at gmail.com. I guess those are the two easiest ways for people to help right now. Pace Radio is the People Advocating Cannabis Education Radio Network. Enjoy the buzz of legalization with Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. From lights to plant nutrients, books, consumption accessories, and more, we've got all your basics to grow or consume cannabis. Visit our info center or take a look at our piercing services and body jewelry, now available in-store through Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. 17 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. We are people advocating cannabis education here at paceradio.net. Welcome back to the Integration Station, you beautiful souls. Sorry for that interruption there. I thought I'd just squeeze in the sponsors while we could. Uh, the, being in a store, not my regular office, uh, still trying to work out the inter, uh, internet situation. Um, but I think we got it good now. And while on this break, it's a good thing that we took it because some great news came through for Cindy. And I'm going to let her share it with you because this has been a long time coming. And I'd love if you wanted to share your like that whole journey leading up to it because there was quite a bit of anticipation and quite a bit of yeah asking to be in that exact same situation that you just got the email confirmation of now yeah well it's um working with this particular practitioner has been there's somebody here visiting me because i just keep getting a bright light from over here it's been happening all morning like this huge bright white light um it's distracting me i apologize um, I've been, I've been, um, since my first Iboga journey, I have been heading this way. Uh, there has been a, uh, they are the people that told me that Cambo, uh, would probably be a good medicine and be a good fit for me. Uh, and they were right. Like it did me a lot of good. Um, and they suggested this Rama lady. Um, she's one of the first practitioners in Canada. She's been doing this for a long, long time. And I've been wanting to work with her for a long, long time um, since then. So two years now. Um, and she was one of the first people that I reached out to and my email never reached her. And I ended up working with you, which was absolutely fantastic. And the way it was meant to go. Um, and then um, after working with you, I did some research on what it takes to become a, a Cambo uh, supplier, server. And, uh, you know, one of the things that you need to do is practice the medicine under a bunch of different people. So <clears throat> I once again reached out to Roma and on commercial break, my email came back from her, uh, welcoming me to work with her uh, near the end of July. So I am just unbelievably excited um, to be doing this. It's it's kind of like the next step. We, we talked earlier in the show about how I was putting myself back on the dieta and I was going to stay there because you never know when it was going to pop up <laughs> and, and then commercial break it pops up and there it is um, so I'm really really excited uh, when I go out I am going to work with her and then I'm going to take a couple of days to integrate and relax and uh, and then I'm going to do a hero dose of uh, psilocybin and then take a couple of days to relax and integrate and then I'm going to follow that up with uh, some DMT, 5-MeO uh, DMT. Um, 
because it, it always seems to be a formula that works for me. You do a whole bunch of work with a heavy duty spirit walk psychedelic, and then you get some beautiful DMT that gets to show you love. And DMT has always been that for me. Like, I mean, from the first, from the first, you know, vape where it wrapped me literally in a weight of blanket of love to my last vape, uh, where it said, no, you deserve self love. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's there for me. Um, so now I get to go out and I get to do this week long, beautiful self-made retreat. Uh, and I get to uh, detox with the, the sacred medicine of Cambo, uh, as well as Sananga and, and Rappé. I get to um, continue by doing a deep dive into myself and some healing walks with psilocybin. And then I get to bring it all together with a uh, beautiful ceremony with some 5-MEO and I am just, it's gonna be a beautiful summer. Okay. It is, I feel so much um, growth and change happening for this yeah. summer. I, I actually went and saw a psychic recently and um, and she was saying that, she said that there's um, quite a few of us that are gonna uh, reach this new level of spirituality in these three months that are the coming summer um so yeah and i love how it is that you're going um in this uh three point process you know you have like your cambo medicines that's three of them in a day but they're all cleansing and they're all preparing and they're all intentional um they're all very much body work and then that other um psilocybin and frogs and mushrooms have worked together for like since the beginning of time very symbiotically um and that's like the again like partially body but partially spirit and um i think that is a really good middle medicine and then as you mentioned dmt a few days later and that's um, the love, the validation, the everything. So you have like, you know, your detox work, your intentional work, your um, actual, like the deep dive medicine, you know, and, the, and that is quite extensive, you know, six to eight hours. Um, and then DMT quite quick, but it's very validating, very much brings the clarity, brings everything together. Um, and then you'll have uh, some time for integration work and also to be doing your own trainings and courses and things like that too. Yeah. It's a really exciting time, Cindy. It is. It is. And um, a friend of mine mentioned when uh, the three ceremonies that I did in, in BC, of course, I had the raven following me quite literally physically the first day. There was there was a raven that followed us all around the town we were in going to do Bufo. Uh, flew over the vehicle, stayed with us. It was pretty incredible. Um, and then the raven showed up during uh, the mushrooms um, the mushrooms brought me to be my spirit animal. So I was I was a wolf during the mushroom trip, um, which was really a weird feeling until I got into it. And then it was pretty incredible. And the raven was with me the whole time. Um, and the raven was there for the DMT too. Uh, you know, even when the DMT said, no, everybody has to stay off to the side, the raven was there. Um, Maybe your that's your next practitioner, one of the ones for you to work with. Cause my first practitioner was raven. And if you've ever heard the raven call, like sometimes when I see nature documentaries or like clips or something like that, I just send it to her because it's like, for me, that means she's my raven. Well, but it's funny that maybe. you say that because that brings a thought into my brain. But my, my friend, Steve, he said, he said the raven is a, a symbol of change. So it kind of goes yeah. with what you were saying a minute ago that it's a summer of change. I'm going through a lot of changes. That also brings me back to a thought that when I came back to you and discussed like, okay, well, I've done some research and to do this, I need to go uh, do Cambo with a number of different practitioners. You said, well, I would like you to go to this one. And was it the Raven lady that you were talking about? Uh, it might have been. She's in the US though. I I've worked with a few practitioners. I'm not sure who I meant to recommend, but whoever, Raven whoever was, was, my was my first. I was gonna need a passport to get to them. Um, yeah. So, uh, and you just said it was somebody that I that think you she's in Florida right now. Yeah, I think and she's in Florida now. Talking about. Yeah, she works with uh, her 
business is called Moon Medicine. She's a herbalist. She works um, doing a lot of womb and old school like healing magic. She's really incredible. And she also has in her tool belt um, is a practicing Canva practitioner. And she trained um, with the same people that uh, Terrence McKenna trained with in the Amazon. So I think, she, I think it was because a lot, a lot of this is sounding familiar. Yeah, she's a wonderful practitioner. Yeah, Raven. Raven from yeah. Moon Medicines. Yeah. And I might be in Florida um, in the cold months. Or somewhere yes, I south. Was, um, yeah, I wouldn't mind going down to Florida in the cold months here. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't, wouldn't say no to that. <laughs> exactly, right? That's what I'm feeling, sister. Yeah. And a few You'll days ago, I saw, I saw a raven as I was driving, uh, dancing with its two young in the sky. Wow. That was pretty incredible, too. Yeah. Yeah, so the raven has been very prevalent in uh, my last set of journeys and in my life since then. It's, it's been pretty crazy. Yeah, and so the wolf something. too. Yeah, do you ever look into druidry or what uh, different animal symbols mean for yourself? Um, uh, no, uh, the, when, I, when I was told that uh, my spirit animal was a wolf, um, it was during Iboga and it was during my... First I bet. And my mom was very present, and her uh, her ancestors were very present. My mom was Cree, um, and so it just, I mean, it was very, very indigenous Canadian. It, it was crazy. Um, you know, I got told, uh, you know, to wear more blue. I got told I was a wolf. I got, you know, the, the information that was passed on to me um, was something that I would have been expecting in a, in a peyote. Uh, journey, not necessarily an iboga journey, but they're all spirit medicines. Um, and I guess the uh, my ancestors were very strong because we we never really studied them uh, when my mom was alive. She was a uh, you know she survived a school over in Newfoundland where they quite literally got rid of any indigenous in her um, and taught her to be a good good little Christian girl. Um, you know so. Uh, I, I think that's why it was so prevalent, as I, I really wanted to connect with my mom in that journey, and uh, my mom was connecting with her indigenous ancestors, and wow, it was absolutely incredible. And it left me, um, it left me with a desire to experience peyote, because I, I think with my ancestral background, uh, my mom being Cree, um, I think that I could learn a lot about my my Cree ancestors. Uh, taking traditional Cree medicine. Yeah. We got uh, that journey of a lifetime, or trip of a lifetime. Yeah. Yeah, let's that go do all the modalities. The we'll start That's with Ashley giving us Cambo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. this It's wonderful. You know that there's so much available. And the more you get into these realms, the more... Uh, you realize there is to know, you know, and, and everybody just holds like a little bit, a little piece of the puzzle. Speaking of things to know, uh, and you might end up wanting to edit this out, but I've got two questions for you. Number one, is there a book I can get to help me learn about more of these teas and, and, and smoking herbs? Like you gifted me with five different ones, but I would like to learn more. Well, I did an article on sociedelic. This is a, questions are always great because everybody can benefit from them. You know, and definitely and, well, own yeah, that so curiosity. I'm do that. I, mean, like, I don't know where. Well, oh, here they are. Ashley gifted me with one's already gone, so I can't show it to you at all. Um, and I still have some of these ones left. But I can mean, oh, where's my favorite one? No, it was this one that we that we smoked. Wild Daga. Yes. Incredible medicine. It's, it's, um, you know, if I read here what, what Ashley wrote, perception, mood, anxiety, it helps with perception, mood, anxiety, and it can be a cannabis alternative, meaning it has uh, some psychoactive tendencies to it. 
Now we yeah. mix um, we mix this 50-50 with a joint, like with cannabis and rolled a joint and smoked it. And what an incredible journey um, or buzz or high, depending on how you want to look at it. It, uh, it very sativa-ish, uh, uh, if you're comparing it to cannabis. I was very, very chatty. Like I was super chatty. Um, and you know, at the same time, very relaxed. Uh, what an incredible thrilling medicine like so i, I want to learn more about this stuff and i also want to learn where to get more of this stuff um i went searching for the other one that we talked about and he's all out sadly so but i am purchasing a book through him um, the amanita guy yeah yeah so I'm, I'm i'm getting a book to learn more about amanita um and it also is going to i said i'm going hunting for them uh foraging for them sorry in october um, so does this teach me how to prepare them and whatnot so I can I can smoke and make tea? He said, absolutely, this is what you need. And I'm like, good. So he couldn't help me with, uh, you know, getting my hands on the medicine, but he's helping me prepare to get my own medicine in October. So that's pretty awesome. Okay. Yeah, he's teaching you how to fish. I'm yeah. giving you the book to teach you how to fish. I think yeah. that's wonderful. So I, I would still like to find some to, to get me through, which, you know, is part of my second question there. Like, how do I find this stuff? I would still like to find, um, I don't find the blue water lily works as well as the Amanita uh, for nighttime, for a nighttime smoke. Because that Amanita, man, I I sleep well and I have beautiful dreams and I wake up relaxed and refreshed. Um, and, uh, you know, I don't, it's not something that I use every night, but two nights ago I could have used it. Like I was having a hard night. I was really tired. I couldn't fall asleep. And if I was able to like, you know, have a little bit of, I tried the blue water lily, but, and it helped a bit, but it doesn't like that Amanita just knocks me out. Uh, yeah. It floors me like, I, cause I mean like my whole life, like you were taught to oh, stay away from the red mushrooms. They're bad, 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 bad. No, they're not. They're an incredible insomnia killer. They're not bad at all. They have wonderful properties. You just need to know how to- So many ways to use them. Yeah, you, you, you need to know how to use them properly so they don't hurt you because they can make you ill. You just have to know how to use them. So I've been working on my apothecary for a very long time. I can't say that there's <laughs> one quick and easy resource. Like we have a network, we have a directory, we have, um, you know, it's not just one place. Hmm. You know, I, I'm the place, but I don't have my... Like, I don't have a shop. Like, I, I'm setting up an office. Cause I spend a lot of time on the road, right? It's not time for me yet to do that. Um, but there are resources there. We do have a directory. We do have a network. Um, right now, I, this is what I do, you know, and, and this works with my life. One day I'll find a home and I'll be that one person. But it's it's not yet. And that like, that's okay. There's different, like, we go to different <laughs> tribes. Um, we grow stuff in our garden. We have other psychedelic gardens where we exchange stuff. Um, in our network, you can find that psychedelic garden. Um, the one that I work in is where I get like a lot of smoking herbs from. I make what's called like hot puri. That's my fun little name for it. Um, and it's because so many herbs work well with cannabis or as an alternative to cannabis. Some of the psychoactive ones, like I provided you, wild daga, that's from Africa. And that is an alternative to cannabis. You do um, get high off of it, more like a sativa, as mentioned. It's also considered um, or called uh, lion's tail. So I like to bring come back to the symbi uh, symbology around <coughs> animal druidry there. Like, what is a lion? A lion is like ferocious, a lioness. It's like, you know, it feels kind of hairy. Um, it's, it's much like, um, reminds me when you're rolling it, like mullen, which is one of the herbs that we have in, in our garden and grows wild all over Ontario and Canada. Um, it's a great, great medicine. It was also considered cowboy tobacco because that's what they would smoke, not actual tobacco. That didn't come until later. Um, so this was like the already native version of it. Mullen is great. Um, the wild daga, that's their version of it. And it is psychoactive. And that's what you'll find across seas and in parts of Africa. Um, the Amanita muscaria, it grows all over the world um you know 
a lot of, well, mushrooms in general do, but there's like over 144 different types of psychoactive mushrooms, more when you, uh, that are being found, like the Stamets mushroom. And like, there are so many um, that are available that we wouldn't even know. Uh, it's just about finding the people who are picking them. In our network, you can find people in Alaska that uh, some work with them, uh, some <laughs> just harvest them for others because it's there in their own backyard and they know that it's powerful medicine. So there are a lot of resources out there. It's just uh, finding them, you know, and yeah. uh, ask, and asking questions and staying curious and finding these opportunities to go out and forage. I did write an article for Sociedelic. You guys can find it. And that's on 30, um, 30 herbs, 30 smoking herbs that enhance your cannabis. I think is what it's called. Uh, so it's not the whole list, but that's 30 that you can start with. And then yeah. you yeah. can do your own investigating from there and maybe optimize uh, on that already list with the ones that are, resonate with you most. It's also in my book, Rebirth. I've got a list in that book. Yes. Yes. I've just been getting into so many, I've got so many books that I forget what's in what. Yeah, and rebirth I don't think all either because I mean, as soon as I read something, and like I've got, I've got friends that are like watching me read something, I'll go, I'm done this one, read it. Yeah, it'll come back to me. Yeah, they do. I've got the uh, a couple out on lend, but one of them, Food of the Gods, I might need to replace it. I don't know if I'll get it back. It's been a little while, <laughs> you know. And sometimes when you hit that, you you get to that point. It's like, do I have to replace it now or? Sometimes yeah. I just ship them out to people too. Yeah. One of the one of the other things that I'm looking at doing while I'm in this cannabis ceremony. So we're talking spiritual cannabis ceremonies where you go in and he guides you through like smoking it and using it with intents and and uh, and whatnot. So um, I'm hoping to set that up while I'm out there as well. That's part of the VIP pass for the plant uh, spirit plant conference. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, well, that's really exciting about Cambo, the Spirit Plant Medicine Conference. That is exciting as well. I'm going to see what I can do about being there. I'm looking into the tickets. You can get VIP right now for less than what a regular pass is going to be in the future. So wow. I think it's okay. Worth I should it. probably look into that now too, then and get that. Yeah. The thing is, like, yeah, I need to know that Finn can be around and also that um that i'm going to be in that area i don't know if i'll know that i'm going to be in that area until i'm there in june june july yeah something to work out though these schedules because there's just so much i know i'm going to meet paul stamets one day like we're going to hug it out yeah well it can, it can mean, it can high help. five if i look forward to july or or november i should say um, the third, fourth, fifth is the first weekend. It's three days. You could fly up on a second, fly home on a sixth, and still do everything. Yeah. You're listening to the Pace Radio Network here at paceradio.net. The opinions of the individuals during this broadcast are their own and may not be the opinions of their group or other organizations they may be involved with. All medical advice during our broadcast is not a medical opinion and should be checked with your medical physician. When you have a pain that's reached its peak, Legacy for 20 is so unique. If organic cannabis is what you seek, here's your trusted partner seven days a week. Suppository salves, fakes and drops, topicals, edibles, infused pop. Just when life seems like it ain't easy at Legacy 420, enjoy a pop freezy. Lab tested products make them the GOAT. Legacy 420 out on your road. Legacy 420 in Tainanega Mohawk Territory. Indigenous organic cannabis at its finest. What do you find at paceradio.net? People advocating cannabis education. Enjoy the buzz of legalization with Campbellford Lifestyle Shop. From lights to plant nutrients, books, consumption accessories,